Hello dear viewers and even dearer subscribers. Welcome back to KSP to Mars, the program in which I try using the real solar system mod and a host of realism and difficulty mods to get to Mars, or indeed Juna as it is called here, but it has all the properties of Mars. In the last episode we fumbled around the grounds of the KSC, trying to get to the deserts or some other area on the planet, and well, we can call it a failure, we can call it a success, but it didn't quite go as planned. Today I built a slightly larger rocket, it's still rather small, it's the Arcturus 3 and the Kerbal Engineering plugin, which I can very much recommend to anyone designing and playing with space rockets, will tell us it has 5.7 kilometers per second of delta V. In the stock game this would be enough to get into orbit and have some delta V to spare. You could go to, m to the moon or to Minmus or any other place really. So probably not so in the real solar system. Oh, we are... it's going horribly wrong. Let's launch before we crash into the water tower there. I'm not sure what happened going to revert that flight because that obviously wasn't the point. Someone is throwing some water on my balcony. I got distracted by that, but revert to the launch and hope that the ship doesn't wobble itself to pieces. This was noted in the real solar system uh, readme thingy that there are some issues with part connections that can cause this kind of behavior. So we are going to revert to launch again and try to launch before this can happen, so not being distracted, hitting the space bar immediately. Here we go, off the bat, no problems whatsoever. Now, in exploring new ground, we can do basically two things. We can either try and go horizontal to get some science from new biomes. Speaking of science, I completely forgot to add science bots. Oh well, we'll just have to rely on Jebediah's very reliable crew reports. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, we can opt to travel horizontal to explore new parts of the planet, or we can opt to travel up to hopefully explore space and the interesting things that lie beyond it. That's what we're going to try now. See if we can breach the perimeter of space with our 5.7 meters per second of delta V. In this mod I have no idea how high the atmosphere is, where space begins, how thick the atmosphere is, or indeed what the gravity gradient is like. I'm expecting it to be somewhat like our own Earth, since it's called real solar system and everything. But how that translates in rocket performance and gameplay mechanics, I'm quite unsure of. So that makes the game pretty much new all over again, which is something which is something I very much enjoy. So if KSP has become a little bit stale for you, maybe you know every Delta V figure, every uh, re-entry corridor, every crater on every moon, consider giving this mod a, sh a spin. It will change things up, I'm pretty sure about that. For instance, we have burned about half our Delta V allotments of about two and a half kilometers per second now, and we're still only at 18 kilometers, going at 300 meters per second. So things are definitely not as smooth sailing as they would be in the stock game. Now, what I'm hoping to do is at least get high enough to get a unique EVA report, to get some more science, to get some more parts, because I can just stitch together a whole bunch of rocket tanks, which is in fact what I'm going to do if I don't get, don't get enough science by doing this. But I would like some more advanced parts like fuel lines, bicouplers, tricouplers to design a, uh, well, a functioning space rocket, really. Because the rockets we will be needing for this real solar system adventure will have to be big. First and foremost, of course, big to get off the planet, but if we want to carry anything meaningful, they will have to be positively vast. So, for that I'm inclined to research the rocketry and construction paths first, where we get structural members, girders, couplers, fuel lines and big engines. Keep in mind though that the specifics of the tech tree are also unknown to me because we are using the KSP interstellar tech tree, which, well, is new to me. I have no idea what is in there. We are currently at 70 kilometers altitude, still climbing, going at 2 kilometers per second. This would put us in orbit in the stock game, no doubt about it. 
but in fact here in the real solar system we are still very much in the atmosphere. We are in the upper reaches of the atmosphere to be sure and we get a nice vista of a quite massive sunrise So because we're getting so high. Let's have a peek at the map view see how we're doing not very well at all we can expect to reach an altitude of 164 kilometers high for sure but nowhere near orbital all even though we got the orbital speeds that would suffice for an orbit in the stock game no matter the challenges are arising as are our abilities we're still at zero nanosieverts per hour i'm now wondering if this mod will simulate cosmic background radiation outside of the atmosphere. Uh, not enough electric charge for the reaction wheels. Electric charge here is full. We have 10 units of monopropellant for our jetpack. And let's ask for a crew report. Very much in space right now. We can get 5 by transmitting this. And since our survival after re-entry is all but... Uh, is nothing but assured. Uh, well, I'm trying to say it's not sure we'll survive. I'm going to transmit this data now. If you recall from the previous series, electricity is very much a problem in the beginning of the tech tree because we don't have batteries and we have already run out of fuel. So, this EVA report is the only thing we can... of this crew report... Jesus, I'm having trouble talking, aren't I? Must be the space. This crew report, there's no purpose repeating it. I very much like that change. Um, there's no use asking the same questions over and over again, and the game now recognizes that. At our apoapsis, I'm going to pop Jab out of the capsule. We are in space, so he can do an EVA report for us. Let's ask you, EVA report, please. Just above Kerbin's water. I have no idea what that means. We are in space above the ocean, perhaps keep that data and get back on board and we could try and transmit that probably don't have enough we don't have enough electricity to transmit all of it I'm going to transmit it should our descent appear too treacherous so I'm going to hang on to this data for full recovery full retrievement but if we are starting to burn up, then I'm going to quickly transmit it. I hope that fills Jebediah with confidence. So, now we've passed our apoapsis, we don't have any fuel anymore, so all that we have left to do now is to crash back to the planet. And I'm going to time accelerate until we get to that atmospheric boundary. So... The atmosphere appears to end at 107 kilometers now. <coughs> Perhaps it's a bit cheaty to use the time acceleration to find out, but then again, I imagine we had some barometric sensors, or else Jebediah just stuck his hand out of the window. So far we're not having much luck with the daylight side of the recordings. We're recording mostly in the dark, my apologies for that. I have tried to time warp so that the sun is in the sky, but that appears to have failed. Anyway, we are coming down at 2100 meters per second now, 60 kilometers. I'm expecting some fierce heating. Should Oh, there it's, go there it's going already. 400 degrees. Yes, I'm transmitting this data, definitely. Transmit, transmit, transmit. And to angle the engine into the fire stream. We have a heat shield, but that's under the pod. And we are now tumbling around what is happening. The command pod, please command pod angle your heat shield into the heat flow doesn't matter anyway the parachute has burned off our re-entering craft the pod itself has survived only just even though the the heat shield um, was barely exposed it was just tumbling through the atmosphere we're slowing down now but there's no way that our good friend, colleague and beloved hero is going to survive this because his... well his parachute's gone so I don't know what he wants to do but landing with no parachute is of course a problem. He doesn't know this he hasn't been outside the capsule since he was in space and then the parachute was in order. His button for the parachute is very much still there which he's now pressing, nothing is happening 
um, at this point he would start to panic but knowing Jebediah he is not panicking look here he is in the capsule looking at the starry night see if we can't rotate that a little bit that view no we can't there's not a lot of movement we can impart on this craft so here we are Jebediah staring at the sky wondering when he or his brethren will in fact get there and he is confident in the assumption that his trusty parachute is gently wafting him down to the surface so any moment now and his ground crew will knock oh there at least that was painless so return to the space center we've had the first casualty unfortunately um, but there's really nothing much to it if you're going to run a space program there are going to be casualties we have 26 science points more importantly and we can go for general construction no we can't it's too expensive in the science points department flight control reaction wheels are valuable because then we can keep our heat shields pointed into the direction of burning heat or we could launch unmanned probes which would reduce casualties somewhat as well or we could go for the general rocketry more rockets of interesting varieties and that's exactly what we're going to do six science points remaining and let's have a look at the science archives now and of course we only have information about Kerbin so yeah we should just get into space and do more science that's basically it so that's what we're going to do come back for the next episode where we'll be launching the Arcturus 4 hopefully again into space and possibly even in a fashion where the pilot might survive it so i'm going to design that and then i'll rejoin you for the next episode as always thanks for watching i'm lorenzo if you haven't subscribed yet consider doing so and you will get updates of the new episodes as they come along hope you enjoyed leave a comment if you did or didn't and tell me why and i'll see you next time goodbye